Hey there, my name is Lexi and thank you so much for joining me for another read along or read aloud. I forget what I call these things. Sorry to have been gone for such a long time. I've been trying to keep up with these journal entries in the book Unbothered. However, they take me a lot more time than I would like them to. So I think what I'll do from now on, um, just for me to be able to get this content out to you in a timely fashion, I'll just reflect at the end of this book. But I would highly encourage you to make sure you are doing the journal entries and reflecting as you go along. I would not encourage you to wait until the end, okay? But with that being said, thank you so much for joining me today. We are reading Omarion's Unbothered, The Power of Choosing Joy, Chapter Six, Start Where You Are. Start Where You Are Meditation. I create my own path and walk it in blissfully. I create. I have the courage to try new things and excel in them. I create. Today, I will make progress toward my goals. I create. Negative thoughts only have power if I let them. I create. I will use what I have and do whatever I can. I create. I will be expansive and not limit myself. I create. I will not let expectations or the opinion of others distract my focus. I create. I will be available to serve my purpose. I create. I remember the LA night scene, the early 2000s, when it was important to be seen in the flesh. There was Playhouse, Supper Club, and Greystone Manor. They were the hottest spots in the city at the time. In my late 20s, life was a party. LA is a special place with so many cultures and people to connect with. I was living my life to the fullest. Before having my son, Mega, my life was all about being an entertainer and being seen. The club was a middle ground where my celebrity and normalcy could meet. I was young, child-free, and enjoying the freedom of being able to do what I wanted when I wanted. Being on the scene was exciting. I lived in Hollywood at the time, 1600 Vine Street, a very vibrant and diverse place to be. Living in the heart of Hollywood was wild. The partying, the noise, the being out and about, I got tired of it. It became stale. The clubs were filled with the same people, the same music, and it started to feel like there was nothing for me there. There was a constant rotation of the same crowd linking up and out of towners looking for a good time. I started asking myself, what am I doing here? I was hanging out with the DJs at the clubs every weekend, getting my records played, but feeling more uninspired to be there every time. There was a pulling need to always be out and in the mix because I spent my young adult life being one of the most famous lead singers in a mainstream group. So I thought it was a part of my job and duty as a performer to not only show up on stage, but off the stage as well. Back in the 2000s, it was the norm to be out socializing with actors, producers, and other celebrities. We all wanted to be seen in some capacity. There was a thrill to it all. The VIP sections, the women, the drinking, the glitz, the glamour that few get to experience in this lifetime. Over time, I had developed this level of mystique as an artist to be in connection with the outside world, to know what's going on, but also to be in my own lane. When I was hanging out, I was hanging out big time. Sometimes I would get booked to do walkthroughs at the clubs, which felt like my own personal party. I was treated like a king. Everyone knew my name and everyone wanted O in the building. And even though I slowly started to feel this pull to step away from that life, at times I felt it was necessary to be out because you never know who you might cross paths with. There was always someone new to meet and connect with. In those days, if you weren't out and partying and showing off, you weren't really a star. I didn't want to miss anything and a part of me didn't want to be forgotten. Going out all the time took a toll on my body. I wasn't a heavy drinker, but taking a little drink here and there each time started to add up. Alcohol was a big part of the culture. If you were out, you were drinking because everyone was. That was the thing to do. Even though I wasn't a super heavy drinker, my body showed me that you don't have to be to witness and experience the impact that alcohol can have on a person internally and externally. A combination of no rest and no water will make anyone look dehydrated and bloated. My body was not what it used to be, and it showed. I looked at myself in the mirror and said, hold up, this isn't sexy, oh. 
this isn't the person I want to see looking back at me. That was my turning point. Seeing how I lost touch with my physical wellness and fitness, chasing a lifestyle and a scene that I didn't really want in the first place. Starting fresh felt like the best option. I was ready to transform myself. I was ready to let go of the party life, drinking, and not taking good care of myself. After having my son, Mega, at 30, I was inspired to embark on the journey of returning back to myself, but as an even better version. I believe in leading by example and teaching our children who are always watching how to be by actions, not just by words. A mutual friend introduced me to Scott Parker, AKA Scotty P, who is a master trainer and life experience coach. He's changed my life and has played a major role in showing me many things about myself and others. Not long after we met, Scott introduced me to the bike trail. I didn't envision biking becoming a forever hobby for me, but it has. The first ride we did was about eight miles. At the time, that was pretty impressive because I was reestablishing my childhood joy of riding a bike and transforming it into adult freedom of productivity. I became completely engulfed with bike riding, being outside in nature and being physically active again. I was in love and ready to take on this new and beautiful challenge. After eight miles, we did 12. After 12, we did 20. And after 20, we did 28. I was hooked. I felt like I could ride for days on end. We eventually worked our way up to 40 miles and I had discovered newfound freedom. This was the life I wanted, needed, and had been missing. My longest ride is 51 miles. Riding clears my mind. I'm able to process unanswered questions and be in the moment. Biking offered me a much needed reset to focus on my spiritual, physical, and mental health. I didn't know what I was getting into when I hopped on the bike as an adult, but I quickly realized that the recommitment to myself was what I'd been longing for. I'm able to encourage myself when I ride. I'm able to be inspired and creative. That was something I was missing. The night scene wasn't giving me that. The drinking wasn't offering me any type of emotional clarity. Reconnecting with my body was a gift. Some of the best ideas come to me while I'm riding. I am my most creative and free self while I'm on the bike. I learn something from everything around me, the weather, the terrain, and the breathtaking beauty of nature. Changing my life in this way showed me that I could do anything and everything that I committed myself to, be it not drinking or dedicating myself to myself. To think that if I wouldn't have reevaluated myself that day in the mirror, I may have never been brave or curious enough to try an old thing like bicycling in a new way. It's easier to stay the same than it is to make active and intentional changes that will set us up for longevity in the long run. On our journeys through change, we have to be self-aware enough to move away from what's keeping us stuck and move toward what's going to challenge us. Partying and drinking were keeping me stuck in a low vibrational way of living. I believe in having fun, but I also believe in finding ways to balance fun with mental and physical fitness. Life is about trying new things and not getting stuck in old bad habits that do not serve or uplift us. It's a true joy to be able to start where you are, even when it's challenging the hell out of us. When we're open to new beginnings, that means we're also open to growth. When we're open to a challenge, that means we're open to the lessons and takeaways of failing or succeeding. Each is an opportunity to raise your vibration, cultivate self-belief, and trust in your ability as great as you say you are. Energy check. Start where you are. Are you open to learning new things? What are your goals? How will you handle adversity? What problem will you solve? How important is it to strategize? Each step in my journey has shaped my overall purpose and priorities in life. Change is beautiful and it prepares us for a fruitful future. Meeting Scott Parker was a turning point in my transformation at age 30. I told him that I wanted to transform my body and get back to a healthier state. He was ready to help me take on the challenge and get right. This was a deeply personal choice on many levels, not just for vanity, but for my overall health and well-being. 
I prided myself in looking a certain way as an entertainer, but I also knew it was in my interest to stop drinking so that I could feel my best on a holistic level. I had fallen off a bit, but I was ready to get back to my best and healthiest self. I was up for the challenge and ready to do the work to get back in shape. Taking that first step was rejuvenating. I had been at my best before and I was dedicated to getting back there. Starting deserves to be celebrated. It's no small feat to do things that are hard or feel out of reach. The choice to change came into my life in divine time. I believe that every thought and pull on the heart to change happens in perfect timing. Not long after I made this decision to shift into a better physical version of myself, I found out I would become a father for the first time. That was a pivotal moment in my life, business and career. I was so excited to step into fatherhood. I was ready and couldn't wait to be a dad. Everything felt anew in an instant. I had rediscovered what it meant to be fully present, not only for myself, but for someone else, my child. Becoming a father was a whole new start in itself. I had no idea how to raise a kid, but I was absolutely going to do my best in that sacred role. As unfamiliar as I was with parenthood, I was absolutely ready to take on the job. I knew that I needed to prepare myself to be responsible for a whole human being. I did not take that responsibility lightly. I knew for a fact that I wanted to be and would be the man that my son would look to with pride as I raised him. When I look back, it's interesting to see that this major life change was coming on the heels of making the decision to take better care of myself. This wasn't a coincidence. It was aligned with my highest good on so many levels. And I truly believe that my entire experience from dedicating myself to my wellness to becoming a father was linked in the best way for me to become my best self. I also began to pay closer attention to my value, productivity, and effort. As I was changing and evolving into this new version of myself, physically and emotionally, I found myself having more inner dialogue conversations. I would start to question who was around me, where I needed to shift, and who I needed to let go of. I was looking at all of these little tedious things and asking myself, does this person value me? If I wasn't who I was, would this person support me? I was taking a real close look at everything in my life. Once I took that first bike ride and rode those eight miles, clarity started flooding in. It was at that moment with this new experience that I could make a mindful choice to start over, to begin again and redirect my life toward deeper alignment. I had become committed to pushing myself to the limit to be my best on the bike and off the bike, in fatherhood and in my individuality as a man. Things were changing in the best way for me, and I'm not sure this new awakening would have presented itself in this way if I hadn't started biking with Scott. A whole new world was waiting for me. Changing started to be second nature. It felt good to choose something different for myself. I started looking at the ending of my old life, relationships, and ways as just the beginning of something greater and more magnificent. We have to learn and trust to be okay with those new beginnings and not quite knowing where to go. There are lessons in exploring new ways of finding yourself and trusting the path that you're on today at this moment. I believe that everyone needs motivation. We all need a reason to really tap into a stride that is unstoppable. My son gave me the motivation to go beyond the limits I had put on myself. So as I continued to grow into my best self for this greater purpose, I became invigorated by knowing that I was leading by example. I wasn't willing to wait for anybody to give me permission to change. It had to start with me and my determination to be who I said I wanted to be. My life wasn't just about me anymore. I was proudly paving a new way. Between biking and fatherhood, my evolution was on the horizon. I learned that changing has to be an intentional choice and part of the human process to learn what's working and what is not. It's necessary in life to face ourselves and evolve into our best. We cannot solely commit to doing something different. We have to put action behind that commitment. Looking at myself in the mirror all those years ago and not liking what I saw was my starting point. Actively committing to take care of myself showed me how strong I really am. 
And even when I didn't think that biking was going to be a revolutionary change for me, I tried it and realized that it's just what I needed to deepen the commitment I had made to myself. My son coming into my life deepened my willingness to learn and be better too. There have been so many layers to starting over and taking on the task of doing something new, even without the expertise. The point of life is to learn and be open to the lessons that present themselves. Each step in my journey has shaped my overall purpose and priorities in life. Change is beautiful and it prepares us for a fruitful future. It allows us to take on things we may have never thought we had the power to do. I have a new perspective and outlook. I feel that this is what life is about. My music, changing in my body and overall wellness, and being a father. When I think about all the information, streams of life and experience, it's showing me something new. It's all reminding me that I am forever growing and expanding for the greater good. And for that, I am grateful. No one can prepare us for the lives we're destined to live. We have to prepare ourselves. It takes practice to become who we are destined to be. There will be moments when we don't know how to get started. And I think the most important thing we can do in those moments is to start anyway. We were built to begin again if we need to, to start fresh, or even to start something new for the first time. There's a lot of beauty in choosing to change, grow, and dive into a life that is worth living. If you don't understand your value, you can't really have a full understanding and experience of life. Energy check, journal prompts. Where do you need more discipline in your life? What are your wellness goals? Who inspires you to be a better version of yourself? Forgiveness mantra. I forgive myself for causing pain and suffering to myself and others. I release. I forgive myself for making mistakes. I release. I am building a future based on compassion and kindness. I release. I forgive myself for not speaking up when necessary. I release. I forgive myself for not understanding. I release. I forgive others for lack of knowledge. I release. I release self-resentment, hurt, and anger from my soul. I transform. Wow. So I feel like I literally had this conversation with somebody the other day in telling them like, you know, it's okay to be afraid of starting over, but don't let the fear of starting over keep you from actually starting over. And a part that I mostly identify with when Omarion said that he started taking a look back at his life and you know, the people around him and are they here for me? Do they really love me for me or do they just love me for who I am or what I can do around them? And let me see, does this person value me? If I wasn't who I was, would this person support me? And I have definitely, I probably honestly, 2021, maybe a few months into me having my own house, I started because it's not even about the house, right? Although the house does symbolize like a more grown and sexy chapter in my life, right? At least in my opinion, it is the same responsibility as having like my own apartment, but there's just a different perspective that comes with owning your own place. Right. And it's like the people that I have around me, I know what I'm willing to do for people. I know how I'm willing to help people. This house is not just for me. I imagine it would be for when people need a place to come or they need help. Right. But the people that I would offer that to, would I be offered the same in return? Would I be able to do that in return? Like who would have my back, you know? I just started having all these different mental shifts and perspective shifts 
Sorry, I just hit my desk. But I just started having all these different shifts mentally and really started taking stock of the people in my life. Did it align with the person that I said I wanted to be? And a few of my closest relationships I realized were not serving me. I love those people and I have love for them, but I had to take a step back from being actively involved as a friend to them in a sense, you know, because the kind of people that I see myself around, I I want mutual support. And when I looked around at certain people that were in my life, I wasn't, I felt like I wasn't getting mutual support. I felt like I was always the dependable one. When people needed help, I'm the one everybody comes to. But I would look around and feel like, man, when I need help, who, who do I go to? You know, outside of my family, outside of my parents, this tribe that I'm building because unfortunately someday my parents are not gonna be there. And some days family is not gonna be there. They're not gonna be able to help. So this tribe of people that I'm building, I need dependable members of the tribe. If I can never depend on anyone around me, what's the point of having people around me, you know? So I really resonate with that part. You know, are people valuing me or would they would they be around me if I didn't have what I had? And not to say that, you know, you can't be friends with people who are going through hard times because everybody goes through hard times. But what I'm saying is, if consistently your efforts are not met with reciprocity and people equally pouring into you when you're having your off times, if you can never have someone pour into you, it's probably time to reevaluate that tribe, right? But Back to the point of starting over, it was very on the in the sense of friendship. It was very scary to think like, man, I don't, I don't have friends. Like, like if I get rid of these people, then I really don't have friends, because you know, I I know a lot of guys, but it's not real. I feel like guy like, and this is not to toot my own horn, but like, I'm considered attractive and a cool person and. Unfortunately, with the guys who have been my friend, except for maybe one or two of them, if they had a chance, they would take a shot. You know what I mean? So I question in my mind, like, do I even have true friends in certain people? Like, or like if they couldn't get something from me, would they continue to be my friend? If they knew there was no shot with me, would they continue to be my friend? That kind of stuff. But as far as starting over, you know, um, I, I've had a couple of friends go through situations where they're afraid to start over and I'm just trying to get them to, you know, you don't have to stay where you are. You can be scared or the thing that you believe you're passionate about. You can take a break from it. You don't have to quit it, but maybe you just need something that's going to help you balance out your life a little more because you're throwing all of your eggs in this one basket and you're carrying it on one side and now your back is starting to hurt or your, your shoulder is starting to hurt, right? So maybe explore what, what else is outside of that so you can have a better balance and a better appreciation for that thing, you know? And a lot of people you would be surprised are so afraid to even just try a different job in a different industry even if it will help solve one of their problems because that is a major problem, you know? So it's, for myself, can I say that I'm afraid to start over if I start, you know, looking at myself? Am I afraid to start over? Have I been afraid to start over? And my answer, I can honestly say, I'm not afraid to start over. There are so many things that I, that I do outside of my passion, which is music. Music is my passion, but I explore I do music, but I explore dance. I've explored pole. I've explored modeling. I've explored fitness. I've explored finance and cooking and just regular, like I've explored working at Kroger, <laughs> working at the grocery store because it had a purpose, you know? And it wasn't necessarily what I felt I wanted to be doing, but it served a purpose and it helped me to become more well-rounded and a happier person to explore things outside of what I felt was my calling or my purpose, you know? 
So for anyone who's listening out there, you might be struggling with not wanting to start over because it's scary and it's frustrating. I would say it's okay to be afraid, but don't let that fear stop you from doing what you know you need to do. You know that something is not working for where you are right now, but you continue to do the same thing over and over and over again. Try something new. And trying something new means starting over. If you're never willing to start over, how can you even expect to grow? How are you human and you don't expect new growth to happen? You know, we're changing every day. And especially for my industry, the entertainment industry, that is constantly changing every day. I need to be adaptable. So maybe changing your perspective. It's not starting over. It's learning a different aspect, seeing a new perspective. But anyway, I do hope that you enjoyed this chapter from Omarion's book, Unbothered, The Power of Choosing Joy. And I do hope that you could relate to what he was saying and or what I was saying. Make sure that if you are listening to this on YouTube or Spotify or Apple Podcasts, make sure you like, comment below, leave a five out of five star review, leave a review. And uh, that, that would help me a lot. Follow me on Instagram, Lexi Quotes at L-E-X-C quotes, Lexi quotes on Instagram to follow along with these readings and request some other books you might be interested in hearing. I think I do like reading these for y'all, but uh, let me know what the next book should be. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Lexi. Until next time.